Listen at bbcworldservice.com slash proms. This is the BBC World Service, bringing news and features from around the world to a global audience. The BBC's global health correspondent, Shulat Mazumda. The BBC's Al Hassan Silla reports from Conakry. Our correspondent in Athens, Mark Lowen. It's our correspondent, Andrew Hadi. The BBC's Emmanuel Gunza is in Addis Ababa. Online, on mobile, and on air. This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Ten a.m. in London, five a.m. in Washington, midday in Nairobi. This is Dan Damon at the BBC. We'll get the latest from Bangkok. Police now say the attacker was part of a network. We'll return to Iran to find out how people there are bridging the gap between Islamic values and modernity. When I was fifteen, I saw a woman riding a motorbike for the first time. And I thought, why shouldn't I do that? The 82-year-old head of antiquities in the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra has been executed by the self-styled IS. We'll find out more about his life and legacy. And the cultural studies professor living a year as David Bowie. Bowie would sit in front of the fridge at night in, in his uh, Los Angeles house, uh, cutting open peppers with a knife and drinking, uh, drinking a glass of milk. And so I've done that, yeah. More on those stories after the news. Hello, I'm Marianne Marshall with the BBC News. The shrine, hit by Monday's deadly blast in the Thai capital, Bangkok, has reopened. Well-wishers have been lighting incense, saying prayers, and laying flowers at the site where more than 20 people lost their lives. The National Police Chief, Somyot Pumpangmuang, says the aim of the attacker was to cause maximum casualties. The murderers are exceptionally brutal. They dared to launch the attacks at a tourist spot as well as in the rush hour when Thai people were returning home after work and tourists were gathering. From this point, we can see the murderers are extremely ruthless. Their purpose was to take lives. Police hunting for a man seen leaving a backpack at the scene have interviewed a motorcycle taxi driver who's believed to have taken him away from the shrine. 